top of the morning to you all. Hold good, on a second. Good morning. Welcome to the Divine Fellowship home version. Oh, uh, so good. So good. I know there's actually coffee in there, so. Oh. <laughs> Got me on that one, Phil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, we have a little bit of windy today, and rather than that, it looks like it might be kind of nice. Not too bad. So, too bad. hope all is well in all of the other parts of the globe that this is actually going to. Kind of weird, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing how we're all connected. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. All on the same planet. Yep. 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 Hope everyone had a great week. I don't know what else. Uh, Friday the thirteenth. We yes. survived. We, we survived. had quite the event on Friday the 13th. We actually did. Oh my gosh, yes, it's too so, funny. Yeah. So Phil went to get a new key fob for the new car, an extra key fob, because, you know, if you lose one, then you're screwed. Kind of um, so we <laughs> went down to this place to get it done. Four times, finally got, long story short on those. I'm not going to go into no, detail. No, don't but. even do the long story short. As soon as somebody says long story short, it's too late. Um, <clears throat> my opinion. Anyway, <laughs> so we get to this... Oh, we get to the store, really? and they try to program a little key fob, and it didn't work. So we get back out to the car, and the key fob that we do have didn't work anymore. So <laughs> they had to... The car was dead. Oh, it was just... Yeah, so we were stuck. We were stuck. But they absolutely did all of the right things. They treated us well. We didn't get all pissy about everything no, or just anything. Like, just kind of... In fact, we were Friday, laughing. That we were was laughing. Friday the 13th. And yeah. they did a marvelous job. They, yes, really, they really, 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 really did. You want to tell them who it is? Batteries Plus. Yeah. You know, on, on Columbia Center. They really are good people. I've dealt with them for many years, well, since they opened. And um, yeah. I've never they had a bad They even gave experience. me a ride home. Yeah. Because I was just hanging out. So was, yeah. Anyway, we had quite the Friday the 13th. Evening. So, and we, the, the church does have an account there, um, you know, to for bat, turning in batteries and all that kind of stuff. It's harder yeah, and harder to get rid batteries of batteries. Down. Um, harder and harder to get rid of batteries. But so we collected all the batteries that people have used because we don't want to put them in the trash. No. We want to be responsible for those. So people brought them to church and Roy took them from the church to Batteries Plus to recycle yeah. them. So, so yeah. Thank so you, Roy. if you need batteries or bulbs or chargers and lights and all that kind of stuff, I'll yeah. go there because they really, really are good people. And the pricing actually is very competitive. So. Okay. So enough of that. Enough of that. But anyway, so we hope your Friday the 13th was not as um, challenging, but it was it was okay. And yeah, you know, it was, it was. really funny because I think they were expecting us to be, get really angry and upset. And they were. You know, we just laughed it off. So it was it was a really nice thing. Come to find out, the guy that drove me home was friends of our across the street neighbors. Grew up with his kids. Grew up with you know, the kids. So folks, it was so. really funny. Yeah. Small yeah. world. Small oh, world. Oh my gosh. Only in the Tri Cities. I hope you don't have that earworm in your well, head. Well, interestingly enough, look at the very first one. Courtesy costs nothing. Yeah. Well, kindness is a superpower. The kindness is a superpower. So, yes. So, there we go. And that was uh, W.G. Benham. Don't know who that was, but smart guy. And then, uh, help yourself and heaven will help you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We have said stuff like that for like. Who said that and how old were they? I, when was that? I don't know. Long time ago? I don't know. Doesn't say. That, that, <laughs> that book doesn't give you that kind of information. Oh. It tells you who did it, but not when or anything. Okay. So, yeah, my other one does. Inquiring minds want to know. Yes, I know. Okay, things that make you go, hmm. hmm. Sometimes the best way to convince someone he is wrong is to let him have his way. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Uh, life is a festival. Only to the wise. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. You ain't having fun. Yeah. Why some wisdom? Yep, 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 yep. Speaking uh, of wisdom, you should do that next. Oh, week. I was going to, yeah, that's right. I forgot to. I was going to. 1920, the first Baby Ruth candy bar was sold. It is named after President Grover Cleveland's daughter, not the legendary baseball player Babe Ruth. Huh. So. I'll do this one next. T-shirts okay. that you might want to have and or may not, or you may want to give to your brother, sister, mother, daughter, aunt, uncle. Wrap your dog in it. Shenanigator. Oh, a, a person I don't know who, who needs that one. A per person who instigates shenanigans. Oh, that's Jackie Bashy. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> You're the shenanigator. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 
bless you. Excuse me. Shush. Shush. Mom didn't raise no dummy. Uh, and if she did, it was my brother. I'm not arguing. I'm explaining why I'm right. Oh, we see a lot of that nowadays. Yep. Not. Oh, here's a, um, a uh, uh, mat, you know, like entry doormat. mat or doormat or whatever mat. It said, send a text when you arrive. No need to knock and get the dog involved. <laughs> why fire up the dog? Yeah, why fire up the dog? I think that's okay. That's it for that one. I got to get another one. Uh, I'm going to turn the heat off. Four, six, seven. I will. I'd be happy to. Uh, we do have a couple painters saying by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Yay, George and John. And John said, if everyone demanded peace instead of another television set, then there would be peace. And George, anybody remember Don Ho? I remember Don Ho. Went to, used to go to Hawaii when he was there playing. And Tiny bubbles. bubbles. Yes, he's an old Hawaii. artist. So. Uh, Don Ho can sign his autograph three and a half times faster then Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. They don't know who Ephraim Zimbalist is. They probably don't know who that is either. Yeah. He was on he was TV on, shows. On, yeah. yeah. So way back when. Another actor. And yeah. I'm not going to say back in the day. Who started that back in the day crap? Oh. Just stop. Don't say that anymore. Yeah. I did this um, on Wednesday. I'm going to do it again today because it is really good. It's profound. It is. People with compassion are less lonely, say researchers. A cross-cultural study from the University of California da, 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 found that wisdom, da, 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 da. <laughs> which is equal parts compassion, empathy, balanced emotions, and self-awareness, may protect against loneliness. If we can increase someone's compassion, wisdom is likely to go up and loneliness is likely to go down. Wow. So it's wise to be kind. It's wise to be kind. Or it's kind, kind to be wise. Yeah. Kindness is a superpower. I've said, I said that. I've been saying. She's been saying. I've been saying. And then little kids, they say some of the interesting, most interesting things. How do I know that I'm real and not just a dream of someone else? Mm -hmm. When looking at a baby, do they know they're alive yet? <clears throat> I wonder what my arm tastes like. He then licks it, looks off into the distance and says, hmm. Taste neutral. Dad. Taste familiar. Yeah. Are there infinite words? My son. No, son. There are infinite numbers. Well, if there's a word for every number, then there must be infinite words. Logic stands yeah. to reason. What did it feel like on your last day of being a child? It was a child asking questions. It's a, great, it's a great question. It is it's a, a great, great question. question. It's a good question. How do you know when you are no longer a child? I don't know. Uh, more kids stuff. Uh, never trust a dog to watch your food. That was Patrick. That's pretty wise. That's wise, Patrick. That's Patrick H. Tan. Uh, when your dad is mad and asks you, do I look stupid? Don't answer. <laughs> never tell your mom her diet's not working. Ooh. Michael, age 14. Yeah, he should have known Ooh, better. He should have known better. Stay away from prunes. Randy, age nine. And Robert, age 13. I don't know how he knows this. Never pee on an electric fence. You heard it it's, at the Divine Fellowship. It's never been on my bucket list to try. No. no. Okay. You okay? Yeah. A well-worn, this is, this is the last. Yay, thank you. And then I will turn it over to James. Thank you. A well-worn $1 bill and similarly distressed $20 bill arrived at the Federal Reserve Bank to be retired. As they moved along the conveyor belt uh, to be burned, they struck up a conversation. The $20 bill reminiscent, reminisced about its travels all over the country. I've had a pretty good life, the 20 proclaimed. Why I've been to Las Vegas, Atlantic City, the finest restaurants in New York, performances on Broadway, and even a cruise on the Caribbean. Wow, said the $1 bill, you've really had an exciting life. So tell me, says the 20, where have you been throughout your lifetime? The $1 bill replies, well, I've been to the Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, and the Lutheran Church. The $20 bill interrupts, what's a church? 
<laughs> that's bad. I know it is. That's bad, that's bad. Oh, I thought it was Did funny. you know that it's the Festival of Lights? Do oh, is it? Oh, I have, yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I remember last year and the year before when it was. Remind me what that is. So. That's uh, Festival of Lights. Um, it's a Hindu tradition, mm -hmm. and I love this. Uh, the festival is mainly celebrated by Hindus, it usually lasts five days. Um, one of the most popular festivals in Hinduism. And it symbolizes the spiritual victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance. Hmm. Bring the light. Bring it. I love it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, bye for now. Bye. Do you want, do you want me to turn this down? Yes, off, please. Or? Just down a little bit if you can. If you well, figure out how to do still, that. Yeah, I can. That's fine. Whatever. Okay. I guess my shawl is warmer than I was expecting it to be. I'm just getting fired up. I don't know. Fired up. That can be scary. <laughs> I get fired up. Let's start with one of our prayers and gratitudes prayers. Again, if you'd like to have this little pamphlet, uh, it's a free ebook. If you'd like to uh, go to thedivinefellowship.com. And there's a little listing of free ebooks, and you can click on it, and this is one of those free ones that you could get. Um, the prayer today is called Prayer for Protection. So join me in prayer, would you please? Shield me from the ever-present unkindness we humans express. Not that I turned a blind eye to the suffering of others, but rather act from the heart of compassion without feeling overwhelmed and burdened. Yet let your light of love shield me and protect me so that I may see how to be of service in a good way. Help me to see the truth and unkindness is the voice of pain. Help me to know compassion for the pain without falling victim to it. Free me from being the victim. Protect me from another's pain. Strengthen me in love. And so it is. Amen. And the gratitude that goes with that, if you'd like to just take a breath and just be in this moment, listen to this gratitude and allow it to settle in your heart space. I am grateful for the protection and safety within divine compassion. I want to chat with you a little bit today about that divine compassion, about love, about the light. It's we're heading into some dark times. We've been in dark times and they could get darker. And I tell you, I've really struggled with what I wanted to say this morning. As a matter of fact, I asked God three times to take it away from me. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> um, but he kept putting it on my heart yeah, because it's big. There is so much hate, is there not? And the hate is a form of darkness, my friends. It's a form of darkness. And what really is sad to me is that there are people I know that are kind, good-hearted people, but they disagree with me. And I can love them anyway. And there are others who see that same good, kind-hearted person, but because that person views politi politics or religion differently than them, they feel they must hate them hate them and say hateful things to them and about them. And it's on both sides of the court. And hate is a form of darkness, my friends. It's a delicious, delicious temptation. Because if I hate, then I have set myself up in my mind to say, I am right and you're wrong and I can hate you for that. And there's people who truly believe, I've talked to people who truly believe that if I don't hate them, then I'm giving them permission to exist. I'm giving that viewpoint a foothold. And that's not the truth. That's a lie. Here's the truth. The truth is light overcomes darkness every time. You turn on a light switch, what happens to the darkness? It vanishes. It vanishes. 
You turn on a light switch and darkness vanishes. You add darkness to darkness, you cover a room in a big cloth, it just gets darker. That's what hate does. Hate is not this absence of error. It is just a despicable disdain that hurts only the one that's hurt that's using it. If I say hateful things to someone, they may get a ping of negativity, but who is that really hurting? Me. Hate shuts us down, closes us off, and cuts us off from divine source because it's not an act of light. It's an act of darkness. And in this time of festival of lights, let's bring light into our world. Let's bring light into our life. The darkness doesn't get a foothold. Not a foothold. It's a temptation to slip into that. Because if I can, if I go into that refrain of disdain, if I can keep saying the same words about the same situation over and over and over, there's a, there's a delicious pleasure in that. But it doesn't last. And it's not a pleasure of joy, it's a pleasure of darkness. And it sucks us in deeper and deeper and deeper. When the truth is, love and light overcomes it all. Of all the people that had any right to hate, it was Jesus. And he stood up to those that were wrong, those that were treating people inappropriately, and he, he called them out on it to their face, and he encouraged the ones that were suffering. And he was without blame. And what did he do? He prayed for his enemies. His last prayer was, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Wow. Instead of spewing hate back, instead of getting all bundled up in that, and shutting ourselves off from the flow of love and light, that that's where we want to be. That's what's going to bring us joy and fulfillment. Hatred isn't going to do that. Because what happens is hatred builds up and makes us feel all, and then it dissipates, and we feel worse. So we got to do it again, so we can feel that we get stirred up again. And that feels momentarily powerful. And it feels momentarily and energetically charged, but it steals from you. It steals your life force energy, and it steals the light from you. Refrain from disdain. I think it was two years ago in January that I wrote an article, Refrain from Disdain. Please, you're not hurting the other person, you're hurting yourself. There's a Bible verse that I just thought of. I bet I can find it, because I think I left it marked because I was going to ponder this later. Let's ponder it together, shall we? Listen to this. And this is from Psalms 139. This is my grandmother's Bible, and she has um, her handwriting at the top of this particular verse, uh, chapter, um, yesterday, today, and always. And her handwriting is this way. <clears throat> but if we look at uh, Psalms 139, and we're going to look at verses 11 and 12. Verse 11, if I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me and the light around me will be night. Isn't that how we feel sometimes? It's just too much. We're overwhelmed. This next verse, I just read this for the first time. I mean, read it and got it for the first time a week or so ago. It's profound. Listen to this. Even the darkness is not dark to thee. And the night is as bright as day. Darkness and light are alike to thee. God can see through it. God can see through the crap. And God can see through the darkness of another person's heart. We can't. All we see is what we think we see. And we think that makes us uh, able to judge them. It's not our job. Not my job, man. I don't want that responsibility. 
I kind of feel like if I spend some time in judgment about somebody fellow, I have this running joke. And I say, oh, that person, how dare they do that? And it's like, well, God just left that one off the hook because I've already judged them. It's not my job. And God can see through that. God can see through that. We can't, so we get to let it go. And when you find yourself tempted to hate, move that perspective. I get to move that perspective. I get to make a new choice and focus on that which I love. Focus on that which blesses me. Focus on that which brings me joy and peace and, and harmony. And if I can't, let it go. It's not my job. God's got it. God's got it. The darkness is eating us alive. Hate is part of the darkness. It's tempting. It's so tempting. Because if I can get in that place and be, oh, judgment, that person's just, yeah. Blah, blah, that makes me feel superior. Oh, gosh. There it is. There the three things that tempt us is lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the boastful pride of life. I am better than them, so I can be in judgment of them. Mm. Yikes. So what do we do when our heart is aching and our heart is in turmoil and we're feeling overwhelmed? We let our awareness activate to the living light of love. And we can have compassion that they don't understand. And what's really crazy is people on this side say, oh, they don't understand, they're doing stupid. And the people on this side say, oh, they don't understand, they're doing stupid. So <laughs> just, can we just recognize that none of us know what the heck we're doing? We're just struggling along here, doing the best that we can. And in that, let go of hate. Let it go. Let it go. It gets a grip on us. And it infests everything. Brings our, our stress hormones go to the roof. And our compassion just gets crushed. That's not healthy. It's not blessing you. It's not blessing me. It's not blessing anyone. And you can, you can disagree and have a preference against whatever politics or religious thing or or color of hair or whatever whatever upsets you. You can have a preference for something different. And focus on that. Put your energy on that. Do good for that. Pray for that. And then pray for that. Pray for the other. Father, forgive them. They know what, not what they do. Pray for your enemies. Love those who love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. That's the path. That's the path of light. We think we can walk in the light and still dip our toe in darkness, don't we? Nope. Then we wonder why we're distressed and shut down and not happy. Because that's what hate does. That's what darkness does. It closes us off, shuts us down, and cuts us off. So let's step back into the light. Let's be in the light. The light is where we belong. We are children of light. Time for us to act like it. Time for us to walk that path. It's not always easy. But it's sweet. And it's gentle. And it's powerful. And yes, that hate and anger makes us feel really strong and powerful momentarily. But it's an addiction. And it'll oh, suck yeah. us in so fast. Refrain from disdain. Kindness is a superpower. Let's shift our thinking. Let's get back into the path of light. Now I'm going to walk you on a guided meditation here. I've been asked to take my meditations a little slower for you. Some people really like to enjoy that. Um, <clears throat> I tend to be a little time conscious. So I've left a little extra time for this today. What we're going to do this morning is an activity for our awareness, our expanded awareness. 
So notice your physical form right now. Notice any stress or dismay or discomfort in your physical form. Just notice that. And now bring your awareness to some place else in your body that doesn't have discomfort. Remove your awareness from the pain and put it where everything's all okay. And just say to yourself, all okay. And the pain is there, but it's okay. Pain is part of life. It's all okay. If your guts are all torn up and your heart's all crunched in, your shoulders are all crunched in because of this hate thing that's been going on, just notice it. It's a reaction. It's a response. And you can allow that to be there. And as you're noticing that, breathe through it. Breathe through it. And say again, all okay. You may want to do uh, thumbs and ring fingers. Cancel, cancel. Taking yourself out of that stressful moment. Cancel, cancel. All okay. Bring yourself into a state of peace and calmness. Centeredness. Strength. This is where your strength is. Not that frantic energy. This. This is where your strength is. Notice that strength. And as you're noticing that strength, let it filter to every part of your body. Let it go to your mind. Let it go to your eyes and your perception centers, which is your eyes, your discernment centers, and perception centers at the back of your head. This is all part of that system that allows you to see, see, perceive life spiritually. Not just what you see with your eyes, but seeing it with your soul, seeing it with your inner wisdom, seeing it with your expanded awareness. And now let it touch your ears and your mouth and your throat. This is your circuit of truth. This may be my truth over here and I, I dislike that over there, but I'm gonna stand in my truth. Honor your truth. And you can speak your truth with kindness and you can be strong and powerful without hate. Hate diminishes you. Hate diminishes your truth. So speak your truth in love. Speak your truth with the power of love behind it. What is your truth? Truth is, blah, 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 whatever that might be for you. Truth is, I'm going to choose love over hate every day. I may not, it might not be my first choice. <laughs> I might have to pray about it, work at it. But I'm going to choose love every day. Every minute, I'm choosing love now, in this moment. Whatever your political beliefs, whatever your religious beliefs, I'm choosing love. I love you. I can see the light of love within you. Because I'm perceiving that with my soul, my spirit. Not based on the external evidences of your behavior or what you're saying out your mouth because that doesn't matter right now what matters is the love and that love within you is registering within me now bring that awareness in your heart space it's so good to know the truth but you can let it go you don't have to carry that hate it is a terrible burden and you don't have to carry it. You can release it. And you can let that love flow through your arms and the rest of your torso. You know, your guts get all... We have a lot of awareness in our guts. And our guts are here to keep us informed when we're not feeling safe. And you can keep yourself safe by distancing yourself from people that are full of hate. But by locking yourself up, by locking myself up, it's not helpful for my intestines. They're crying out. So bring that loving awareness into your intestines, into your guts. Thank them for their awareness and remind them, we're walking in the light today. We're walking in faith today. 
We're walking in trust today. Thank you for your insights. And we're walking in trust. We're walking in love and we're walking in faith. Let more and more of that living light of love, because you are a child of light, let that flow into you from divine source. And let it flow into your legs now. Have you noticed the circuit between you and spirit is opening and expanding? It's what love does. Notice that. Notice that you are actually sitting or standing or laying or resting in a beam of light. That light is shining down on you, in you, through you, down into the earth. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. Not somebody else's hate cannot separate you from the love of God. Nothing can. Romans 8.28. 838. Look it up. You can find it. Nothing can separate us from that love. But when we embody hatred, when we embody darkness, we can't see it anymore. We lose track of it. We get lost in the darkness and overwhelmed in the darkness. God can see through it. And it doesn't matter if we're stuck for a moment in, in that dark stuff. God sees us anyway. It's to him, it's just like light. He's got, he's got x-ray vision. He's got night goggles that he can see our energetic signature. We don't have that. So we tend to judge other people because we can't see their energetic signature. We can only see their external expression of their viewpoint. Let God see and let us walk in love. Now bring your energy awareness to your feet. To the bottoms of your feet, there's an energy portal. And you can let go of all of that. Just let it fall out of your body. It's heavy. Just let it go. And as this beam of light shines on you and through you, it dispels that. It sends it away. The word dispels cuts the spell. Maybe we've been entranced by it because everybody else is. Since when are we like anybody else, right? And notice your feet, how they, they're walking a path of light. Can you notice them? Give them permission to stand in the light. Take solid ground on the light. Not the shifting sand, the quicksand of hatred. Don't let yourself stand in that. If you feel yourself entrenched in the hatred and, and you can't find your way out, ask to be teleported out of that and on a stable ground. Divine Source can do that for you. Right here, right now, in this moment. Transporting us into stable, stable ground. Into a path of light. And feel yourself in the light. Where love overcomes darkness. Every time. Every time. And now let's take a little journey in our imagination. Imagine yourself standing on a high peak, solid ground, a path of light. And from this perspective, we can notice the, the world around us. Just notice it. Notice that there's forested areas, there's jungles, there's deserts. There's oceans. Allow yourself to feel the life of that. Allow yourself to feel the flow of water as it travels down streams, down rivers, as the ocean waves move, as the currents in the ocean move. It's not stagnant, it's moving. Allow yourself to feel that movement and become aware of it. Allow your expanded awareness to notice this. And now allow your expanded awareness to notice all the plant life on the earth. There's so much life here. So much life. 
and allow yourself now to be uplifted off this precipice, this pillar, wherever you are. And allow yourself to get high out into the atmosphere so that you can see a broad range of, of the planet. It's, it's beautiful, a beautiful planet we're on. Or we choose to inhabit at this time, however you want to see that. And allow yourself now to be lifted even higher so you're out closer to the moon. You see the whole planet bathed in light. Maybe you can see uh, part of the planet is dark because it's night. And even then there's lights on. Lights are beaming. And allow yourself now to be lifted a little higher so you're out further in our solar system. Maybe you're just at the edge of our solar system and you can see our sun and all the planets as they're traveling uh, along with our sun as we're hurtling through space. And allow yourself to be lifted a little further than that so that you're out in the universe. Maybe there's a, a, the blue nebula or a red nebula or or the beautiful gates of whatever, the beautiful crystalline structures that make up um, ice planets, whatever. Allow yourself just to be out in space. And as you're noticing you're out in space, you're not alone. You're not alone. You have that still, you're surrounded in that beam of light from divine source. Feel that, experience that. And now notice back to where the planet Earth is. And notice that there are threads of energy between you and things on this planet. There are things that you love on this planet. People that you love, there's a thread of connection there. Maybe your favorite book, there's a connection there. There's a thread of light for that. For everything that you care about, there is a thread of light. Now I want you to notice here that there is also a thread of darkness, perhaps. This is hatred. And I'd like you to disconnect that. Can you do that? Just notice it. See where it ta attaches in your awareness and just let it go. Have trouble with that? Imagine you have a sword and cut it off. It doesn't have to connect with you anymore. Sweeping yourself clean of that. And then reconnect with these threads of light to things that you care about. Maybe it's your home, maybe it's your pets, maybe it's your friends. All of those things have little threads of light. And notice those threads of light now. Those are two-way streets. Those two-way streets, you give love and you receive love. You give love and you receive love. You give a kindness, receive a kindness. The two-way streets. Now notice, are there any of those lights that is just one way where you're given but nothing's coming back? I want to take a look at that. I want to release that connection, that relationship. Maybe you don't need that anymore. Maybe that's not a part of who you are anymore. You just allow yourself to disconnect that. It's not necessary to carry that. These two-way threads of light where there's love given and received in equal measure. And let's face it, even if we're, we're, we love a child or a grandchild, they can't give us back anything. They're just little. But they give us back love, unconditional. That thread is bright, is it not? Let's notice that. This love is not a thing that we're given and exchanged. It's just this gentle, sweet, compassionate, blissful connection. And allow those to become clearer and cleaner. And you can do that with your expanded awareness. Notice this living light of love that is flowing to you, through you, around you, and send it down that thread of light. It'll, it'll purge it, it'll clear it. If there's expectations coming back at you, just send that living light of love through there. You don't have to fulfill someone else's expectations. 
Those are their expectations. You can still love without fulfilling those expectations. And allow yourself to feel love coming back. Let the expectations be set aside and just notice the love. And notice how beautiful that feels, how right that feels. And now as you're out in the universe, notice a star nearby. They say that stars sing. They have a, a, a harmonic or a tone or a sound that they emit, a vibration they emit. Tune into you, to the star that you have noticed. And allow that star now to send you a tone that vibrates within your heart space. That star is recognizing you for who you really are. It's recognizing me for who I really am. A living light of love, a divine being, a sacred being of light, a precious child of light. Notice that. Allow yourself to perceive that acknowledgement. And allow yourself to take that acknowledgement with you and let it resonate deeply inside. And gently, gently, gently allow yourself to move back into our solar system. Gently, gently, gently back through the planets of our solar system next to the moon, noticing the earth again. Now as you notice the earth again, not only do you see the earth and its beauty and, and the magnificence of it, you have a sense that we're all struggling. We're all hoping for light. We're all hoping for love. And we can honor that, whatever our differences are, whatever country we're from, we can honor that love and that light that is within each and every one of us. And now allow yourself to get a little closer into the atmosphere, getting closer now. Allow yourself now to descend back to the, just above the precipice where you were standing earlier, and then back onto the precipice and you're standing again on a path of light. Your, your light is full of, your path is full of light, you're full of light, and there's light all around you. And as you settle your feet back onto that solid ground, that sacred ground, you notice that there's the, a little gift that's been left here for you. Maybe it's just a word or a thought or a feeling, but notice it and allow yourself to receive that gift. Maybe it's a symbolic object. Whether you understand the symbolism or not, receive that with deep gratitude, deep gratitude. It's imperative that you had a moment to remember who you really are and to step back into your faith, love, and trust. And out of gratitude, leave a little token of that gratitude. Leave a gift here. Maybe it's a word or a thought or a feeling or some symbolic object. Even if you don't know what that means for you, allow yourself to leave that and feel the gratitude there. Allow yourself to follow that pathway from this precipice back into the here and now, back into your life, back into your physical form. Deep breath in, exhale, wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. We went really far. <clears throat> Allow yourself a moment just to reconnect and resettle into, the, into your physical form. Mr. Phil, if you join me for communion, sir, and I left the communion on the kitchen counter. If you bring it to me, that'd be great. Bring it with you. Hope you enjoyed that guided meditation. I know I did. It, it felt really good to be open and free. Communion on the kitchen counter here. Thank you. So I was getting ready this morning. And <clears throat> I really love the scarf. So I said, oh, Phil, how do I look? <laughs> he said, honey, you look very COVID. Because <laughs> you look like COVID. Because I had was really pretty here and we're wearing sweatpants and slippers. <laughs> so it was funny. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Delilah was wondering what I was bringing in. She thought it was something for her, of course.
She always thinks everything we have is hers. Like a child. Communion. This symbolizes Jesus' sacred path. He did it right. Of all people that had the right to hate, but he didn't. He chose love instead. May we do the same. Join us in prayer. Loving spirit of light, as we take this in, help us to take in love on a whole nother level in a whole new way. Remove the darkness from us. Help us walk in the light. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Join us in prayer again. Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, bless us, guide us, help us to walk in the light. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so now. now, if people have any questions about their guided meditation. We'll get We've got a few minutes to do that. Hopefully that guided meditation was slow enough uh, for you to um, really get the benefits of it. I tried to slow down. It's kind of a challenge for me to do that. <laughs> and when I'm in church, it's easier because I can sense where people are a whole lot faster. With the lag time with Facebook, uh, it's really a challenge for me. So anyway, let's see if there's any... Any comments or questions about your guided meditation or your gift, the gift you gave or gift received? Anything there, Mr. Phil? Hold on. Oh, donations. Yes, thank you, Beth, for acknowledging that I forgot. <laughs> if you're, if you're um, donating either PayPal or uh, sending a check in or, or whatever you choose to do, it's much appreciated. We are really grateful for that. Thank you for... Uh, for sharing in this journey with us in that way. Okay. Any questions? Questions? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. I can't believe that. Cindy had a, a, you know, a bunch of stuff to say here, so it's online. Everybody can read it. Yeah, but I can. La, 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 la. No, no questions yet. Okay. Well, there you go. <clears throat> I guess we're going to wrap up early today. I left time for, for comments, questions. Okay. One more moment. Oh, Myrna's got a question. Received a sterling silver heart. Gave a thank you with a white feather. Okay. <clears throat> so the sterling silver heart, silver is about reflectivity. So allow yourself to reflect the love that you are. Allow yourself to, to express that. Let people see it. Let people see it. The thank you note with a feather. This is saying, actually, if, if there are people that you know could be blessed by a kind word, express it. Whether it's written or not, express the kindness that's in your heart. Speak it. People are ready to hear, need to hear. It could be a blessing that way. Okay, anything else? Andrea left a blue book. A blue pearl. Okay. Uh, let me ask what that might mean for you. Oh, the blue has to do with um, communication. Uh, and pearls have to do with wisdom. So this is letting you know that you have wisdom to communicate to others. So do that with grace and beauty. It's a gift. Thank you for sharing that gift. Anyone else? Uh, Scott uh, got a gold orb, and he left a black jelly bean. A black jelly bean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would depend on whether you like black jelly beans or not. <laughs> Some people just don't like them. <clears throat> so, what did he leave? Oh, he got an orb, a gold orb? Yep. Okay, so this golden orb is all about knowing your value, knowing your worth. And the, the black jelly bean is about fun. It's time to have some fun. So have fun, enjoy, uh, enjoy being the love that you are. Notice that. Okay? 
Anything else? Um, Marlena said she started out started out by an active volcano. Ooh. Blew out on a flying carpet and came back, uh, and the volcano was quiet. Ah. Found a burning bush, gave a black stone tablet with writing, and uh, that she didn't recognize. Okay. So we'll take that a little bit at a time. So the volcano that was nearly erupting, this is all the anger and hatred in the world. And the journey that we took today, when you came back, it was less. When we take ourselves out of that, things are less dark. Things are less frantic. Things are less under turmoil. So the calmer and peaceful and more loving we are, the better this whole planet is. And then she, what did she, um, she read magic carpet, okay. Yep. So it gets to be easy. Um, and what else was in her? Came back and the volcano was quiet, found a burning bush. Ah. And gave a black stone tablet that she didn't recognize. Okay, so the burning bush is all about the, how Moses met God was in a burning bush. The bush that was not burned up, but it was on fire. So this is about the I am energy, that divine energy. That divine energy is not consumed by itself. That divine energy doesn't burn out. And this is giving you stamina to be able to keep doing what you're doing, being the love, being the light that you are. The tablet with the black tablet with writing on it, um, black does not mean bad. Sometimes we translate black as evil. But often black is the expanse of knowledge, and the writing you don't understand is okay. You don't have to know, you just do. And you're doing, you're cutting it in stone, carving it in stone. Your choice, I choose to walk a path of light. You're writing that in stone. And it seems to me the writing on this tablet is uh, in an angelic language. So know that the angels are here to assist you. Does that make sense? I hope it does. What else? Uh, Andrea had uh, another note, note saying that she received a necklace of shining blue pearls. Oh, okay. So again, it's the same, that blue pearl, the pearls of wisdom. Wear them. Let people know that you, can, you have this wisdom to share. It's way okay. It's a beautiful gift. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I, um, Marlena was just clarifying the black stone she was actually giving. Yes, yes. Okay. So you're giving your commitment to walk the path of light. You're carving that in stone, and you have angelic assistance with that. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, actually, oh, I'm sorry, I misread. She apparently gave back a stone tablet, not black. Oh, okay, back, okay. All right. Sorry. So, again, it all makes the same sense. The only difference that a black tablet would be would be it'd be unlimited. <clears throat> the stone is it's still saying, you're writing it in stone, I choose to walk a path of light. End of story. And you have angelic assistance to help. Okay? Yeah, that wasn't her. I misread it somehow. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, looks like that is it. That's it for oh. now. Okay. Uh, the, 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 um, uh, Beth was saying that Andrea Swami um, Muktanada referred to the blue pearl as the light that illuminates the mind, that illuminates mm. everything. The light that illuminates the mind and illuminates everything. You have wisdom to share. Share it. Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate that. Look good. Okay, if there's any other questions or comments, you can leave them. And I will uh, get back online and check, uh, make sure that I, all the comments are, are acknowledged. All right. Hope you enjoyed today's journey. I know I did too. I hope you have a wonderful festival, festival of lights. Be the light that you are. <clears throat> I ran together really fast. <laughs> Smack. <clears throat> You're still connected to that divine light, letting it shine in, shine through you, shine into your heart space. Send it down your arm to your left hand, from your left hand to your right hand, back to your heart space, completing that circuit. If you want to imagine you're in the divine fellowship and you're standing around the circumference of the uh, fellowship room or the 
sanctuary and being able to do the left hand up, left, right hand down kind of thing. You can imagine that. The energy is still there, that, that sacred ground, and it's still active. Whatever works for you. Bringing that energy in, and you'll feel it start to build uh, between, between your hands. This is where your power is. This is love. This is powerful stuff. Now, there may be someone in your circle of influence that could use this healing light of love for their mind, for their emotions, for their stress. Hold them in this sacred space for just a moment. What a beautiful gift that is. Now release them. You don't want any psychic backwash. Fresh, bright energy into your heart space. Left hand, right hand. Back to the heart space. Letting that energy build and amplify. And you can feel that even bigger sphere of light. Bring that into your own heart space. Bring that to yourself. What a gift you can give to yourself. And then share it with the world. May the source be with you. God bless. See you for Wednesday Wisdoms. Enjoy the heck out of today. Amen to that.